Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. We have some breaking news. <clears throat> the Dallas Cowboys are bringing in Zay Jones. Not me and Mrs. Not Mrs. Jones. Actually, uh, son of Robert Jones, wide receiver, uh, last with the Jacksonville Jaguars, um, who is, um, I think his first year was 2017 with the Buffalo Bills. Um, nothing spectacular with the Buffalo Bills his first two years. His best season, 652 yards um, and seven TDs. Um, he got traded to the Raiders, where he played there for two and a half years. Um, again, nothing spectacular until the Jaguars two seasons ago where he had his breakout year. Um, with the Jaguars in 2022, he had 823 yards, 10 yards per reception, um, five TDs. Uh, last season, he became more expendable as um, after, um, damn, their wide receiver came back from gambling. Um, was was taken off the suspension list. He only played in nine games, having 321 yards and two TDs. Now, for those out there that think that, oh, man, they're, they're bringing him in to put some pressure on C.D. Lamb, that's not the case, people. That's not the case. C.D. Lamb's going to get his deal. It's just a matter of when. Uh, C.D. is working out and in great shape. And for those out there that are saying, oh, man, let's trade Brandon Cooks. No, that's not the idea either. Uh, Brandon Cooks is going to be wide receiver number two, and I believe ready to take a big, big step. He will be the third or fourth receiver. We'll see how Jalen Tolbert does. Um, but production-wise, you have to look at this and say that even with the down year he had last year, 321 yards, Michael Gallup only had 100 yards more playing in all of the games. So from the standpoint of if he rebounds to where he was two seasons ago, then this was definitely an improvement. Now, here's where it's going to be interesting to me, at least to say this, is, and, and I'm sure trolls will say, you're crazy. But see, the Dallas Cowboys have become a reclamation project for players. And by that I mean, because the Cowboys, they're interested in signing you to a one-year deal. And the reason why some players may look at this and say, this is a good opportunity is because you will be seen. Let me take, for example, Randall Cobb. Randall Cobb in 2014 was incredible. 91 receptions, 1,287 yards, 12 TDs. He was an absolute beast. Unfortunately, his career took a turn of Michael Gallup's. He didn't have the injury that Michael Gallup had, but each year he kept going downhill because 2015 it was 829, 2016 it was 610, 2017 653, and then his final year with Green Bay in 2018, it was 383 yards. And they looked at it and said, sorry, your production just is not there. Well, here's the craziest thing. Because he had Aaron frickin' Rodgers throwing to him all those years. And you look at it and say, if you're not catching passes from Aaron Rodgers, then you are probably done. But lo and behold, Randall Cobb signs a deal, a one-year deal with the Dallas Cowboys, gets 55 catches at 15.1 yard per reception for 828 yards. That's 450 yards more than the year before with Aaron frickin' Rodgers. And, of course, he was on a one-year deal. The Cowboys said, thanks, we appreciate it. And he ends up going to the Texans. The Texans looked and said, oh, man, because they had just gotten rid of um, Hopkins. They traded him away. They bring in Randall Cobb and say, hey, hey, that, guy, that, that boy can still play. He dropped down to 441 yards on the season, dropped three and a half yards per completion, to 11.6 and looked like ass ass after signing a $25 million contract. He got paid to go back. Going to the Cowboys got him paid. Make no mistake about that. He ends up being released by the Texans and the Packers bring him back. So he went from 
Aaron Rodgers throwing the ball to him, to Dak Prescott, to Deshaun Watson, goes back to Aaron Rodgers. And the slide continues. 375 yards and 417. So if you are Zay Jones, you could look at this and say, I can go to the Cowboys, and Lord knows we will be on TV quite often, unlike Jacksonville, other than being in Jacksonville on TV. Um, I can make some hay here, and either the Cowboys decide they keep me, or I can go elsewhere because I'll have turned my career around. Say what you will about Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott has made some receivers look really good. And usually when they leave, they're not quite as good. Um, you can look at a player like, say, Dante Fowler, who most people looked at and was like, mm, that guy's done. Um, comes for a couple of years, plays a role with the Cowboys, goes on and gets paid with the Commanders. And so this is where this may be advantageous. Now, Zay has already gone through with the Cardinals for an interview and with the Titans. Now, the thing about the Cowboys is, is this. When they like a player, when they like a player, they, get the, they don't let them leave. They don't let them leave to go elsewhere. So if the Cowboys are truly interested in him, especially with his dad being a former Dallas Cowboys, the Cowboys, if nothing else, love to, um, love to opine for people they're familiar with. And this would probably be the kind of signing that the Cowboys would do. Um, also, here's where it gets to be interesting. And I'm not going to say that I agree with this or disagree with it. Just putting this out there. The thing with the Cowboys is this. Stephen Jones looks at it and says, if we get into signing a free agent early, you're going to probably pay three times as much as getting veterans down the road. So if I wait and not sign that big name early in free agency, I can possibly sign three guys. Chances are at least one of those guys will hit. And, and if I've let go some of my guys, I may get a comp pick. So let's say that Zay ends up being a Cowboys receiver. Well, you let Michael Gallup go, and you may be in a better position and you may have saved a whole bunch of money. It's not exactly the worst move in the world. And I dare say, this is the kinds of moves that have kept the Cowboys, at least as a competitive team. People are bearing the Cowboys. People are already saying they're not going to have a winning season. They're, gonna, they're not going to be a playoff team. I beg to differ. In fact, I am going to go, when I go on today, with Dan Quinn... I'm going to make him put his money where his mouth is. You watch. All right, good people. I've got some things to do here before I get ready for my show with, with Dan Salio at 3.30. Watch it live if you dare.